right, let's get into it. I don't know exactly how to start this, but uh, when you're reviewing two years worth of um, some of the most tumultuous times that we've lived in, uh, it's kind of uh, hard uh, to know where to begin. I'm Greg Bishop. Thanks for hanging out. Springfield's Morning News. I'm here with you each and every weekday morning from 6 to 9, so um, appreciate you uh, taking time each and every morning to hopefully uh, stay informed and and uh, to provide reaction, and you can always sound off at 217-629-7970. Uh, you can also email bishoponair at gmail.com or find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search Bishop on Air. Now, 640, and uh, let's do a little bit of a flashback here uh, from uh, two years ago this week. Now, uh, if you recall, we had uh, just a bit of a you know overview of where we've come from. Early 2020, saw images coming out of uh, China. They were alarming. Uh, the images, by the way, flashing back forward here, the images coming out of China, again, are, are alarming. Uh, but but uh, in 2020 January, we didn't really know what was going on uh, in as far as uh, the the situation in China with this, this novel coronavirus. And then we heard it was being called COVID-19 because it was a virus that originated in 2019. Uh, and then uh, as you progress through the early parts of 2020, we're told by local public health officials and state public health officials that uh, there's no imminent threat to the public. But that quickly changed to Governor J.B. Pritzker uh, ordering restaurants to not allow for indoor service. And then uh, days later, uh, announcing a statewide stay-at-home order for people to stay home uh, and only essential workers, what he deemed essential workers, uh, were allowed to to leave home, uh, according to the order. Now, he said that you know, he wasn't going to have police go around and bust up gatherings, but people could have been cited for being in gatherings of 10 or more uh, because he kept progressively shrinking the number of gatherings that people could have, including at churches, including at schools, including just private events. Your right to peaceably assemble uh, were being uh, constrained by the governor's COVID-19 uh, mandates. So he issued that mandate, I believe it was March 21st, uh, and it was a 30-day stay-at-home order. And then April 21st, 2020, uh, he reinstituted another 30-day stay-at-home order. Uh, and then throughout there, you had, uh, and we shared audio of this earlier this week, but um, uh, questions about, uh, you know, if he was if he was comfortable uh, governing uh, unilaterally. Uh, and he said that he wasn't necessarily comfortable, but uh, the story I did two years ago uh, at that time, you know, I talked with Kent Redfield, a professor of uh, politics, longtime observer, and he said, listen, I mean, there could be lawsuits filed if the legislature doesn't come in and do anything. And then we had a lawsuit filed, uh, State Representative Darren Bailey filing that lawsuit. Uh, but this is what it was like um, two years ago on this on this week, and actually it was the 27th of April two years ago uh, when there was a uh, an announcement out of Clay County where uh, the the former state representative, now state senator, turned gubernatorial candidate vying for the Republican primary nomination to go up against Pritzker. Uh, state Representative Darren Bailey filed that lawsuit, and uh, Pritzker was asked about this two years ago. Uh, when the Clay County judge made a ruling in this case. Governor, a judge just ruled that your stay-at-home order is, uh, in Darren Bailey's lawsuit, is no longer able to stand. We're still getting the details of what that order means, but would you like to react to that? Representative Darren Bailey's decision to take to the courts to try and dismantle public health directives designed to keep people safe is an insult to all Illinoisans. The, who have been lost during this COVID-19 crisis. And it's a danger to millions of people who may get ill because of his recklessness. If the judge is saying, Darren Bailey's right, you, you might not have this authority. What is every, so every city, every county is gonna go ahead and say, guess what, we're opening. That is the danger that Darren Bailey has put this state in. You've just stated it perfectly succinctly. People are in danger as a result of this ruling, of the judge's ruling of the suit that was brought by Darren Bailey. We certainly are going to act in a swift fashion uh, to try to have this ruling overturned, uh, certainly put a stay in, in place. Um, I mean, it's, it's frankly, uh, it's insulting, it's dangerous. 
uh, and people's safety and health has now been put at risk. There may be people who contract coronavirus as a result of what Darren Bailey has done now. So again, that was uh, two years ago this week. Uh, and as the developments uh, continued in the uh, litigation, it turned out that that was only for Darren Bailey. So he didn't have to follow the governor's mandates, it was not for statewide. But you had other lawsuits filed, some shot down, some blocked, some dismissed. Others proceeded forward as the governor continued. You know, the, the mitigation efforts, he said, was meant to slow the spread of COVID-19, including keeping kids from school, requiring masks, uh, uh, continuing to dial up or dial down uh, capacity restrictions for restaurants. There's still a lawsuit concerning uh, the governor's uh, impacts on restaurants uh, during that time, uh, one that's pending in Sangamon County from a Geneva-based restaurant, Foxfire. That case is still pending. Also still pending, uh, the governor's mandates on um, uh, COVID-19 vaccine or testing for teachers. Uh, So that's something else that's still at play here. Uh, And we'll actually revisit that a little bit uh, here in a moment. But uh, I did want to kind of uh, fast forward a bit now to this week, two years later, and uh, where we're at in the pandemic. Dr. Anthony Fauci was asked about this on ABC uh, over the weekend. And uh, here's some of what uh, he had to say when asked where we're at in this uh, pandemic phase uh, for for the United States as a whole. Here's uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. How close are we to the end of this pandemic? Well, that's an unanswerable question for the following reason. And, And I don't want to be evasive about it, but let me tell you why I'm giving you that answer, Judy. We are certainly right now in this country out of the pandemic phase. Namely, we don't have 900,000 new infections a day and tens and tens and tens of thousands of hospitalizations and thousands of deaths. We are at a low level right now. So if you're saying, are we out of the pandemic phase in this country? We are. What we hope to do, I don't believe, and I've I've spoken about this widely, we're not going to eradicate this virus, if we can keep that level very low and intermittently vaccinate people, and I don't know how often that would have to be, Judy, that might be every year, that might be longer in order to keep that level low. But right now, we are not in the pandemic phase in this country. Pandemic means a widespread throughout the world infection that spreads rapidly among people. So if you look at the global situation, there's no doubt this pandemic is still ongoing. So again, that's uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci uh, talking to ABC and uh, saying that we're no longer in the pandemic phase. Now, apparently he's come out and and, and walked that back a bit and said that uh, uh, we're still in a pandemic or, you know, we still have to have caution and concern and uh, we're just in a different phase of the pandemic. But uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker was asked about this uh, yesterday here in Springfield when he was at a uh, unrelated event. Uh, and uh, laid out that uh, he, he, you know, is trying to clarify for Fauci what Fauci said there. Uh, but also uh, he was asked about uh, if he's going to continue his COVID-19 um, uh, emergency declaration. Uh, and this is what um, this is what uh, Governor Pritzker had to say in response to uh, Fauci, but also whether he's going to continue those uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, emergency declarations. I don't think he said we're out of the pandemic phase, but but he did say that the worst of the pandemic phase he thinks is behind us. Um, and I, I hope and pray that, uh, you know, and I would trust his opinion. I hope and pray that he's accurate in that statement. Um, you know, my view is that we're being vigilant. Um, as you've seen, we no longer have mask requirements across the state. Uh, we've lifted many of the executive orders that have Uh, had any restrictions associated with them. We're moving toward, I'm hopeful that we will be able to remove all of them eventually, and the disaster declaration. We're listening to the CDC about that and the White House, um, and also keeping our own counsel about the cases and hospitalizations so that we're tracking it, so that we can notify all of you about the care that you can take for yourselves of your own health. And again, he's asked if uh, he's going to continue his disaster yeah, declaration. We're continuing because, again, we're winding down some of those provisions in the disaster proclamation. Um, and that takes a little bit of time. And also, we are still in the pandemic. Let's be clear. The federal government has a disaster declaration in place. So does the state of Illinois.
So again, that's uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker yesterday being asked to react to uh, the uh, White House COVID advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, saying that uh, we're, we're out of the pandemic phase, but then having to walk that back. Uh, and ultimately, Governor Pritzker says he's going to re-up his uh, ongoing, what would be, I think, the 25th? Disaster proclamation concerning COVID nineteen, uh, and you've got uh, Republicans at the state house that say this has gone on too far. Uh, that uh, there needs to be uh, oversights. And one question that I've had for a while is when are we actually going to get into uh, audits of COVID? investigating uh, how much money was spent on contact tracing, uh, investigating how much uh, impact the the pandemic restrictions had and were they actually beneficial. We've already seen some reports, but will the state house actually delve into that type of thing as well? It's an election year. We shall see. Uh, coming back, we'll talk about one of the measures that uh, the governor refiled despite JCAR doing various things. Uh, so we'll talk about COVID-19 vaccine and testing mandates on teachers. While the governor signs a series of bills to help with the teacher shortage. So stay tuned. That's coming up here on WMAY with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk, Springfield's five day dependable forecast. We've got a high of 67 today, the low of 53, with the possibility of some shower. Back with WMAY's Springfield Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop. We've been talking about COVID-19. And Governor J.B. Pritzker yesterday uh, signed a series of bills, and that's on top of other bills he's signed to address the teacher shortage. Uh, Some that he's already signed deal with allowing for retired teachers to work more hours in the classroom without impacting their pensions. Yesterday, he signed a bill that uh, lowers the the certification costs for a retired teacher from $500 down to 50, uh, also lowering some of the thresholds for younger aspiring teachers to get into the profession. Uh, so he talked about, you know, all the things that they're doing to deal with the teacher shortage. Uh, he says that there's around 2,000 uh, vacancies across the state that need to be filled in order to best teach our children. Uh, but there are some that uh, no longer work in the profession for a variety of reasons. And uh, some of those reasons include COVID-19 vaccine mandates and testing requirements. And I asked the governor yesterday, uh, how does that not impact the COVID-19 uh, vaccine mandates and or testing mandates? How does that not impact the teacher shortage and here's what the governor had to say in response well let's be clear we you know we are still in a pandemic um, and we've been in a pandemic now for more than two years and our schools as we know we want to make sure they're staying open that our schools are keeping everybody in the school healthy Uh, it's very important for people who have leadership positions teachers especially Uh, who are together with many kids in classrooms all day long, uh, six to eight hours in school together, uh, are vaccinated. And so we've asked them to get vaccinated. We've required them to vax or test. Uh, And if they're unwilling to do those things, it seems to me they're unwilling to keep the community of the school safe and the community at large safe. Now, I talked with uh, a teacher who was fired back in December, uh, Matt Allen. He is a former uh, teacher here in the Springfield area who taught history and government. He says he was fired for not uh, complying with vaccine or testing mandates. Yeah, ironic, isn't it? You know, that I stood up for almost 20 years teaching and preaching about our country and our freedoms and liberties and how, you know, motivating young people to, and inspiring young people to to teach them lessons of sacrifice and of, of our country and, and about all the people who've sacrificed before to keep the liberties we've ha- we have from tyranny. And uh, cases still pending uh, when it comes to vaccine and testing mandates. So we'll uh, be watching that space closely. It is WMAY. From the fly.